All right, last video concentrated on looking at the limiting reactant and the theoretical yield. This time we're going to focus now on doing an example of looking at just the theoretical yield and the percent yield. All right, so we're going to look at a different reaction now. Let's take some sodium and react that with aluminum oxide. And we're going to form aluminum. and some sodium oxide. So first question says, when 5.52 grams of sodium is heated with 5.10 grams of aluminum oxide, the limiting reactant is sodium. What is the theoretical yield of aluminum produced? All right, so the previous calculations that we did on the previous video to determine the limiting reactant is not necessary in this problem because we're told what the limiting reactant is. Okay. So in order to figure out our theoretical yield of product, okay, we're going to follow that same pathway of our grams of A to moles of A to grams to moles of B, excuse me, to grams of B. Okay, we're going to follow that same pathway, except we only have to do one calculation this time, okay, because we already know what our limiting reactant is. So we want to take, in order to figure out the limiting, or excuse me, to figure out the theoretical yield, we want to take our limiting reactant. So we're going to start with our 5.52 grams of sodium we want to convert that to moles of sodium and then to moles of aluminum. Okay, in this case, we don't have a choice of our product because it's actually asking for the yield of aluminum. So to moles of aluminum, to grams of aluminum. Okay, that is our calculation. So we start with our 5.52 grams of sodium. We want to go from grams of sodium to moles of sodium. We use our periodic table for that. And sodium has a molar mass of 22.99 grams per one mole. And remember, molar mass is always per one mole. And we take into account our coefficients in our next step. So when we're going from moles of Na to moles of Al. So we have a 6 in front of sodium, 
so that gets a 6. We have a 2 in front of aluminum, so 2 in front of aluminum. And then our final step is to go from moles of aluminum to grams of aluminum. And we consult our periodic table for that. We have 26.98 grams of aluminum per one mole of aluminum. Let me write that again. That's per one mole of aluminum. So, plug these values into our calculator. We have 5.52 divided by 22.99 times 2 divided by 6 times 26.98 and our calculator spits out 2.1593388 and so on and so forth. We have three sig figs in our starting value so we want three sig figs in the answer so I have 2.16 grams of aluminum. All right, next question, still dealing with this example. Okay. So now we have our theoretical yield. We can go ahead and write that out. So this is our theoretical yield. So we've answered that question, but remember we're looking at theoretical, we want actual and percent yield. So our second question, dealing with the same, uh, same calculation here, is let's say we perform this experiment, okay, and we get 1.85 grams of aluminum. That's how much we actually obtain. Okay, what is the percent yield then? So remember our equation for percent yield is our actual yield divided by our theoretical and times by 100. So our actual, remember, is something that has to be given to us. It's what is physically um, received or, or formed in the lab. So in this case, that's our 1.85 grams of aluminum. In theory, we should have produced 2.16 grams of aluminum. So we multiply that by 100. Oops. So we have 1.85 divided by 2.16. We're going to multiply that by 100. Everything has three significant figures, so we want three significant figures in our percent. Okay, so we have 85.6% yield. So this is our percent yield. And then just to make sure we were all on the same page, the actual yield is 1.85 grams of aluminum. All right, in the next video, we're going to calculate theor or excuse me, calculate limiting reactant, theoretical yield, actual yield and percent yield all in one question.